I'm Louis David Benyayer, and we will discuss today, uh, this morning, on open science and the new economy of knowledge. Uh, we had a great panel yesterday. I didn't, I don't know how many of you attended to the panel related to uh, research on collaborative economy. Uh, you did, apparently. Yeah, you also. So we are going to uh, go. Uh, to uh, complement that discussion, which was quite interesting. Um, and among the questions that were raised yesterday was the question on openness of research and also the pace and rhythm of uh, research related to a collaborative economy. And hopefully uh, what we're discussing about open access, uh, open science, open data, could be, and we'll see what the discussion leads us to, could be an answer to those uh, topics. Uh, the landscape of science and research uh, changes very uh, rapidly. Uh, legacy actors and historic actors are gaining more and more uh, power. Newcomers emerge. And that trend of open science, uh, and we'll go deeper into those definitions of open science during the discussion, is a new territory and a number of questions are raised, among which uh, the sustainability of the business models of uh, open science. And that will be our uh, focus of our discussion. Um, if publishing is free and open, if data is open and free, well, how can we finance that research? And, well, I'm not sure we'll answer definitely to that question in the next hour, but hopefully we'll raise a few hints to work on furthermore, uh, one or the other. So I will, uh, briefly, and they will introduce themselves more deeply, uh, Laurence, uh, Bianchini from, uh, My Science Work, Julien Ehring from Tree of Science, Jean-Christophe Pessard from Open Edition and Nicola Chauva, who would have been here but is not, and um, Vincent Ricordo from uh, Kiss Kiss Bank Bank. Hello, merci. So I'll let them to introduce themselves, and after we'll have a discussion on three main topics, publishing, uh, production of research, and data management, right? You start, Laurence? Hello everyone. Um, so my name is Laurence Bianchini and um, I'm working, I'm a science journalist for My Science Work. Uh, My Science Work is a, a social network dedicated to scientists and uh, it's exclusively dedicated to the, pub the scientific publication in open access. So it means that it's a, a social network, a platform, uh, for the researchers and the scientists to communicate between themselves, to uh, work together, to collaborate, and to uh, read and share the publications that are uh, openly accessible. Um, and uh, for myself, I'm a PhD in physics and a science journalist because um, the social network is based on um, on. Uh, axes uh, on things that we want to emphasize for the the, the, the way research uh, works and those are uh, well for the open access of course and uh, also the use of uh, web 2.0 for science for collaborations everything and uh, then uh, we focus also on the place of women in science and in the end um, we focus on the employment of phd we also uh, produce a uh, um, science media, which is called My Science News, where we write articles in French and in English about uh, scientific news, about uh, portraits of researchers, of young researchers, PhD candidates, and we also publish uh, videos and all, all that um, journalists can do to diffuse science and to make it accessible to everyone. Hi, my name is uh, Vincent uh, Ricardo. I'm the, the CEO of uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which is a crowdfunding platform. As everybody knows what crowdfunding is, don't have to give an explanation about that, right? And uh, the question for us today is, can crowdfunding be a solution for those guys? 
I mean, can we finance these uh, open science on crowdfunding platforms or not? Will be the question for us today. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Julien Ring. I'm CEO of uh, Tree of Science. Uh, Tree of Science is dedicated to uh, train uh, researcher from uh, academia or uh, R&D uh, sector and um, train to digital research and uh, to be uh, trying to use uh, research communities, research networks and to use um, collaborative works between researchers and uh, to be uh, informed uh, what is uh, existing in the, the field of science to be connected to researcher or uh, citizen. And the other part of uh, what we are doing is uh, consulting to uh, inform uh, academia or um, research departments in, uh, in company to use uh, or deploy uh, digital research tools in, uh, in the for their work. Um, that's all. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jean-Christophe Pessa. I'm the director of premium programs at Open Edition. Open Edition is a comprehensive environment 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 sorry, for uh, uh, open access communication and uh, publishing in the field of social sciences and humanities. We are uh, publishing online uh, more than 300 uh, um, uh, journals, uh, six, more than 600 uh, scholarly blogs, uh, uh, scientific announcements, and we gained uh, two years ago a facility of excellency from the French state government uh, that will fund our new platform, wh whose name is Open Nation Books, uh, that will publish within the next seven years more than 15,000 um, books in, in uh, uh, humanities and social sciences, mainly open access. Thank you. So my first question goes to Julien. Sorry, <laughs> you'll start because uh, this guy has been uh, in both uh, sides. Uh, he's been a PhD in a hard science and now he's, uh, as you noticed, going in another field. Uh, what, from your point of view and experience, what are the barriers or uh, the difficulties to uh, foster open science inside the uh, scientific community. Yes, I've been researcher in neurobiology uh, for 10 years, almost 10 years. And um, my guess is start with the uh, money. I think the, the first uh, step to, to for uh, reaching uh, open science is money because uh, um, science uh, made a great evolution uh, for almost 20 years now. Uh, all, all know that uh, science is uh, um, directed by a project and the money is going uh, through the lab for the research through their project management. So what is difficult uh, I think now is to um, to go out this, this way so uh, to make some research without uh, being uh, involved in a very strict, very rigid structure of uh, project management. And um, w the second point is the structure. Um, the academia field is very structured by uh, university uh, institutes of research on uh, governments. So if uh, for a researcher to work, uh, you have to, to find money. You have to find money for research, for equipments, and for the guys who are working in the, in the lab. So, um, and the, 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 it's linked to the third point is the rhythm of research. The, um, the research have increased very, very, uh, the reason is has increased very much, uh, now. And, um, it's difficult to, uh, to work with, uh, open science or collaborative work with citizen. Uh, citizen science is very difficult to link to uh, research because some field, uh, have a so high reason to work. There are some to work to, to have some reporting as uh, every year. Every sometimes less every six months, and to uh, to work with citizen, it's very difficult. And uh, but since now there is some uh, some solution coming from a researcher uh, from citizen. Researcher wants to open to share the the data or results, and the citizen wants to be involved in research. Uh, um, it's true some fields are more open than others, and uh, some field uh, I think. For my instance, I was uh, in biology, and biology equipment sometimes are very uh, expensive. So uh, it's difficult to say, okay, we will uh, use uh, crowdfunding 
to uh, to uh, fund our roots, funding our research because equipment is so so high so so expensive. But uh, there is some solution. I have in mind uh, a project from uh, Harvard University by uh, Professor Shang. It's uh, I wire the data are not uh, funding for uh, our citizen, but uh, to um, to analyze data. That's the point where researchers can uh, can use uh, citizen involvement. And IWARO is a project where uh, researchers uh, give uh, some data about uh, how uh, uh, neurons in the brain are uh, linked. But uh, to sorry, IWARO. Yes, um, the project is uh, dedicated to uh, to make a, a map of the brain uh, of neurons in the, in the vision. But uh, to analyze the data of the um, what imaging uh, is uh, giving to the researcher is a very long uh, long way. So the idea is to use uh, people and uh, to use their ability to uh, to follow. Uh, the, the neurons, the fibers of the neurons, and uh, to uh, to to do it very easy, they uh, imagine a, a game. So the uh, the huge data um, that are coming from the microscope are analyzed by people with a simple game. So uh, they can uh, think uh, to be able to map the circuitry of the brain. This is an example of how people can help scientists directly. Even this science is very expensive to manage. So it would be a kind of crowd sourcing of workforce for facilitating the uh, analysis of data, right? Yes, the, the analysis of data. There is some other solution in another field uh, very interesting for open science, citizen science, is zoology, because uh, field zoology is very difficult now to, to find in, uh, in academia because uh, it's not very linked to uh, R&D or uh, industry. So uh, to to be able to um, to have some data from the field, uh, scientists are uh, are asking to people to give them some data. There is different project in France. Uh, you have ones with photos. Every people can send photos of insects. You know, can do it in a in garden in, in forest, and send to the um, to the to researcher. So it's not very. Uh, Easy to manage the data, but it's a very uh, a big flow of data. Very interesting to have a, a map of what is uh, going on in our garden, for instance. And there is equivalent project in uh, California on every field uh, in uh, oceanography. With uh, there is some project in open science with uh, wells. Where every people can record and make some movies, and they said to the project and have some data about uh, wells uh, mobility in the in the ocean. So there is some solution, some interesting solution now. Uh. Well, hopefully there are some solutions. Um, we have the uh, two uh, kind of uh, experts or representative of the uh, publishing uh, sector and related to open access issues. Can you? Just start by describing what is your business model, because uh, I think it's interesting to understand how do you finance the free part of uh, your uh, model. And after Lawrence, you could perhaps um, explain how do you reach that equilibrium that we are all looking for. So first of all, uh, from the beginning, we are state fund funded uh, facility. Uh, so uh, we are uh, we were born with our first platform, which is uh, revue.org, with uh, revue in French, it's uh, journals, and not uh, a dancing. Um <laughs> it's not a Cancan style yeah, uh, yeah. science. So right? we will change our name uh, next year by uh, Open Edition Journals uh, instead of uh, revue.org. But we will uh, keep revue.org for the French uh, community, French uh, space speaking area. And uh, uh, in 1999, this platform was born in Avignon in south of France. And since ever since, we were uh, financed, fun funded by uh, the French government and um, and now, since two years, we are beginning to uh, to, uh, to try to to build a business model on top of open access uh, contents, uh, with the selling of services uh, around open access uh, contents. So, and who are their, your clients? Uh, our our main clients is uh, libraries. We are trying to build uh, an alliance with them for the, the the development of open access publishing. 
because uh, t uh, today um, uh, uh, libraries are, are funding uh, with great loss a uh, kind of publishing that is not uh, sustainable for them and for the scientific community. So we are trying to to uh, to establish a business model with a hundred percent regive to the community uh, for the publishing. So HTML uh, from our uh, journals is free for everyone uh, on the planet, on the world, with an, uh, an internet connection. And if you are a library and you want to access premium services, you buy a subscription for these uh, journals. So you, 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 we give them access to PDF format and EPUB format and other services dedicated to the, 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 the librarian community. Okay. So free for individuals and uh, paying for professionals for, yeah, for of premium the users. Premium users. Uh, Vincent, do you have examples of? Because uh, I know that uh, on Kiss Kiss Bang Bang there are numerous of uh, editions that have been financed. Uh, do you have examples of uh, scientific journals that have been financed either on your platform? Or perhaps that I don't know if you would like to raise that, but another uh, another platform. Uh, no, we don't. No, we don't. And it's one of the the ma major question for us today. I mean, w when you start to talk about crowdsourcing, I mean, the history of crowdfunding is linked to crowdsourcing because, of course, you had crowdsourcing one day, and five years later, you had crowdfunding. So, I mean, in your field, uh, it seems quite obvious to us that one of I mean in, in in the future all I mean at least a part of it might be financed by the crowdfunding which is not the case today science is uh, is really really uh, let's say the the big unknown uh, market on crowdfunding except for one or two platforms which are really dedicated uh, to science and uh, most of the time we're not talking about edition in this case but but projects so the the I mean, I came here not to give solutions because everybody knows what crowdfunding is, but maybe to ask some questions. How come that science is the field today, let's say as creative field, uh, which is the, 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 which is not using uh, crowdfunding? So I'm talking to you guys. How come that you, you, you I mean, all the, those projects right now are staying, let's say, in the family and they are not presenting to the, to the public, to the audience that might support you one of these days? So it's a really an, an open question for the case. Yes, uh, I have to. There is, uh, I think, perhaps 10, 10 platforms dedicated to crowdfunding from science, uh, pre uh, Science Fund Challenge. Uh, um, there is now uh, a new one in, in Germany, uh, Science Starter. Uh, which is German, so uh, it's uh, very dedicated to, uh, for Germany. But um, I think it's not um, to fund, um, to make some funding from a world project in science. What uh, researchers use, are using uh, crowdfunding is for uh, segmentation of the research. One point, publication or field uh, perspective, field research, or s and this is a way to uh, to, crown f to, uh, to use crowdfunding for science because you cannot uh, fund your project uh, with two hundred thousand euros uh, with a crowdfunding. That's the point. But there is some, and the researchers who are using or thinking or using crowdfunding platform are more or less uh, researchers who, who are very connected. You use social media and because uh, crowdfunding, if you want to uh, to have some people. Uh, put money on your uh, project. You have to be known. You have to be. Uh, is, you have to share about your research to be uh, to have a diffusion. So uh, that's a point uh, for researcher now to be connected to uh, to uh, diffuse uh, the project and be uh, known by citizen. And um, well, this is a guess, but um, scientists, uh, those that we're talking about for a moment, they're they're professionals, so they have a, a, a strict uh, format where they they work uh, in, and they they're spending a lot of time uh, finding uh, finances and uh, uh, building projects inside this uh, academic format. But there are now a new 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 scientists i would say like uh, what we call uh, do it yourself biology or in french uh, a biology de garage uh, and those are um uh yeah non professional scientists and they would i guess uh be I'm not sure they would like uh, them to be called non professional scientists right <laughs> <laughs> not institutionalized perhaps but yes yes professional that it's not their their job for a living <laughs> Uh, 
Yeah. But they they could be uh, using uh, crowdfunding for their research. It's uh, they, they have no strict format to to stay in. So yeah. So does it mean that uh, in order to un let's say get a better scale on uh, open science, we first need to uh, to have the institution collapse and to uh, build new rules for evaluating research and funding? Is it the 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 necessary path to uh, have a more open science? It's a different path, but maybe they could they could uh, go uh, you know like not parallel, but they they could mix together. And this is all what Julien was talking about: is two ways of doing things and mixing them for different projects and in different formats. <laughs> Better complementary that uh, opposed, right? Uh, you know, crowdfunding could really benefit scientists by, if they have to explain what they're doing and its significance to the general public, I think it's in everyone's best interest. Uh, because very often, you know, the scientists proposing through traditional channels, only scientists can understand what they're saying. And if they can't really explain why studying a snail darter is attractive to, an, or slime mold is attractive to a bricklayer, then they don't deserve to get the money. Well, this is... I don't think this is that simple at all. I mean, of course, science is very specialized. And uh, as a matter of fact, I do mathematics, for example, and I will not be able to explain you really precisely what it's useful. Okay? But uh, you cannot be that category. It, it, it really helps if, if you're asking for money. Oh yeah, if you're asking for money, sure. It, very often I speak to grad students who can't explain to a person on the street what they do because they're so specialized and so narrowly focused that only their peers understand them at all. But as a matter of fact, if you ask a grad student, she really doesn't have enough culture to explain you with easy words what you're doing, that's right as well. Uh, but I specialize fields, you can't avoid this as well. I, I use the example of slime mold deliberately. That's one where I've seen crowdfunding. And he got his money because he could explain it. And he did a great job. And I think popularizing scientific research, at least to the point of being able to explain to a normal human being what it means, it's not a bad thing. I think that's the concern of all scientists, not to to what you're saying. I'm just saying that it's not that simple. And there's another question. It's we're all talking about breaking barriers between scientists and between the public and uh, mixing all, all those. Uh, but science is not something that is very, very, um, that is uh, well known. It's not in the general culture like uh, art or uh, other things or in the journals are mainly talking about politics, economic, and then they're talking about science. Uh, science could be more present in our general culture, but wh who, who is it the job to, uh, to, to make it available? I'm a science journalist, so I'm trying to uh, diffuse the knowledge, the science to the public. Uh, but is it the job of the journalist to do that, or uh, of the scientists, of other people? This is a this is an interesting question. Uh, uh, I'm okay to say that it's not that simple. But our, one of our main barriers and difficulties is to evangelize the community, the scientific community in the field of social sciences and humanities to the, uh, to the interest of, uh, being, uh, publishing open access. And, uh, uh, society and democracy needs, uh, need open access, need, uh, need, uh, scientific literature in, in social sciences and humanities. De decision makers needs, uh, input from this community. And, uh, um, this is our, our one of our main goal to, uh, to, to, to make this kind of literature open access. Just want to say that what is, um, um, I mean, research are able to, to make some crowdfunding. Generally, have some specific researchers who are very, uh, uh, some, mm, they put some ability to, to talk to people, to uh, vulgarize this uh, science. And uh, now we have some researchers who are able to make some talk TED talk, talks. But um, what is uh, missing is um, training to media. Uh, we have to train uh, scientists for uh, a, media, a purely media training. Because um, what is missing, uh, 
in a crowdfunding platform is um, for what is difficult for a scientist is okay how can i uh, um, invite people to to, to crowd crowdfund my my project and we as i have to make a movie or some text presentation it can be easy but if you want to your project to be to be seen you have to make some movies some scene and it's very difficult for a lot of researchers to uh, to make some accessible uh, movies for people and uh, it's that's the point some are very uh, very famous for that but uh, a lot of uh, researchers are not able to do that so for the crowdfunding platform the difficulty is it what can you give for to people in exchange, yes, uh, you can give. You, can, you, know, you cannot give a, a CD. If you are a very media trend, you can make some beautiful movies with science. It can be linked to science and art because a lot of uh, field of science are very uh, interesting to, to be linked to art. But scientific needs some times. And uh, we talk about evaluation of science. Uh, evaluation agencies are never rarely. Uh, um, takes uh, the point of uh, diffusion of sharing science in their uh, reporting. So uh, scientists are not very uh, interesting or uh, very pushed to, uh, to to diffuse science or to to spend some time to uh, for uh, to be connected with people, and that's a point of uh, difficulties now. Yeah, because apart from the CDs, of course, which is the most uh, you know usual uh, thing that you've got as a reward on crowdfunding platforms. The meaning of crowdfunding is to be open to a community. So, I mean, to be open means to give a part of yourself. And in any case, either you can be a scientist or a football player or, or you know, a, a hot contemporary man or whatever. You always have something to give. And part of yourself, part of your research can be um, simple things, drawings, mathematic lessons, uh, you know, uh, explain a public explanation. There's millions of things that you can give because as uh, you said, and uh, I quite agree with that, we're talking a lot right now with CEA of uh, Grenoble. So that, let's say for the domotic part and, and the, 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 this part of it. And those guys are coming little by little. You will see like maybe 10 projects on our platform between now and, and, and December. And we had the same discussions for many months. They said, what can we give? back, uh, how we can install this relationship with the, the audience that we don't directly talk to usually, how we can manage to, to make a good presentation. It's only a, a, a matter of energy, only a matter of, uh, of willing to do so. As long as the, the, as long as the connection is done, I mean, the reward stuff is, is let's say, the, the, the funny part out of what crowdfunding is quite easy to manage. And we can help you for that if you need one day. So we, we identified in the previous discussion, let's say, uh, institution lever, and now we're getting back to individual lever, and you're appealing all to a new breed of researcher that would be both connected and would, that would have self-expression qualities and that would be, uh, very keen on explaining what they're doing. And we all know that probably all these qualities are not yet in, uh, all the, uh, researchers and uh, that you are, uh, probably part of in this audience and uh, also a part of our panelists today. But Laurence, you wanted to add something? I wanted to ask uh, another question um, linked to crowdsourcing of uh, science. It's um, what kind of um, uh, amount crowdfunding, of... Crowdfunding, you mean? Yeah, crowdfunding. Sorry. What? Uh, and uh, it's um, what are the amounts of money that the people raise? Because the the money linked to research is huge, uh, linked to huge amounts. So, <laughs> you know, uh, four years ago when we were building our platforms, everybody thought we were crazy. That that we, nobody understood why people should start to give money to each other with this worldwide crisis, and and we didn't know at that time. And and the question you're asking now, I mean, we we start to have some answers about that. I mean, on on our platforms, you can collect from one euro to ten million dollars. Because it's the way it happens everywhere in the world. Unfortunately, not in, unfortunately for us, not really in Europe, especially in America. But technically, there is no limits. It depends of the, 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 depends of the nature of the project and the size of the community you will be able to touch. And, uh, is, is your, uh, if your project is really mainstream and, and you've got the good angle and the good channel to, you know, to talk to those guys, they, they, there is no uh, real limit. And uh, it's only a matter of uh, organizing the project, pitching the project, identifying the good uh, uh, communities to talk to. And, uh, once again, it's, 
the, the maximum we we've seen right now it's 10 million dollars or close to 10 million dollars which was a game so of course you can you can't be more mainstream than that but when it comes to, to science or, or technology i mean you've got let's say the the geek part of it or the the, the i mean all all those guys which are helping you to crowdsourcing to crowdsource or your 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 project i mean technically they can do the same by crowd fin, uh, financing the project too i mean all those guys are giving each 50 euros the average donation then you will you will start to have 100 200 300 maybe 500,000 euros for those projects it's really only a matter of what kind of project and which are the communities uh, that you want to talk to but it's only a, only a matter, and we work a lot on that to make sure for every project to make a, what we call a cartography of every project community to help those guys to 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 raise the i mean to to find out the, the the good target to make sure they are not you know they've got not too small or or too big and that also raises probably the point of uh, global awareness that we already uh, discussed about those topics and uh, jean christophe you launched something uh, i love open access uh, can you just explain us what is this approach and to which it's targeted what are the results so an uh, uh, open access movement is is um, nearly 10 years that there will be the t uh, ten, 10th anniversary from for the Berlin Declaration uh, at the end of the 10, uh, 2013 uh, this year. So uh, it's a, um, a movement that begins uh, with the crisis of prices uh, for uh, uh, subscription in libraries for scientific uh, journals uh, uh, with a great uh, Big rises in prices from uh, big societies, corporate societies like Elsevier and Springer, uh, and it's a, a, a very heavy weight uh, over uh, uh, libraries' budgets. Uh, in, in, and uh, the, 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 um, the movement begins at uh, from start from this problem, and a, a part of the community uh, came to understand that science need dissemination uh, at the age of the internet. Uh, web equal access to information. So information wants to be free and liter uh, scientific literature wants to be free, uh, too. Uh, so there is, uh, uh, already a kind of crowd, crowdfunding for science. This is taxpayers paying for, uh, in many countries paying for, uh, science. So, uh, open access, it's, a uh, natural, uh, movement and output for all. It's not really a voluntary crowdfunding when, when it comes back to taxes, right? Uh, people vote and, uh, elect, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's a kind of voluntary because <laughs> we know that yes, in many countries the fund is, everything is decreasing. Is in, though, everything so is in kind of. <laughs> it's, it's a kind of, uh, volunteer. Uh, Involuntary, quite voluntary. But I don't know what how to say, but it's a part of the democratic uh, uh, um, uh, the process. Uh, so uh, this year we launched a, a, a movement uh, we, we called "I Love Open Access," and uh, in many languages, uh, in Greek too, and in Italian and in French, "J'aime l'open access," "L'accès ouvert." Uh, in uh, Portuguese too, uh, in uh, response to uh, another uh, kind of counter revolution in uh, in the in the the, the countryside of uh, scientific publishing, trying to uh, to to block uh, the the the, the av advancement of uh, uh, liberation of uh, scientific literature. Uh, from from the part of uh, pri private corporate uh, uh, pu publishers uh, at the at each level of the state and even at the st at the level level of the um, EU uh, Commission. So uh, Nelly Cross and uh, the, the I don't know what to say the vice president the, from the the EU Commission issued a statement and the EU Commission issued issued a, st a statement uh, trying to uh, develop the, the the open access to scientific uh, publishing and in Great Britain uh, a new law uh, uh, issued last year. Uh, make uh, all publication, scientific publishing, open access in uh, a new uh, a model of O4 pay model, uh, which is not the model we promote because we promote the freemium model where nor the author nor the reader are paying for reading science. 
and uh, the, the so in France and other countries in the world in US and uh, uh, in US too uh, the, the debates were uh, are today not are we going to make uh, scientific publication open access but how are we going going to make it uh, free of access and not free to produce so in many countries there's a model developing and in great britain britain they they uh, adopt the uh, offer pay model so uh, this is why we are trying to uh, to open a new way new route to open access with the freemium route for uh, social sciences and humanities Okay, we have five minutes before uh, qu questions, and we have already started. And I have a good news for all of you, because uh, I have a magic trick. Uh, and you're free to uh, have um, to use this magic trick. Uh, what would you change to, uh, or what decision would you make to foster uh, open access with that magic trick? What is your without any constraint of budget, law, or whatever, in your dreams, your uh, most, your craziest dreams, what would you do now if you have superpowers? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> 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 but what item? About this item precisely? About how, how we can finance uh, or or Searching for something more, uh, no? Or I don't know if it's about superpower. From from my perspective, and I, I'm quite close to what you say before. I mean, your 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 world is is really a closed world for us. I mean, it's like either if we really, really, even if we are really interesting in this kind of subject, it's quite closed because the I mean, the way how you communicate to the rest of the world is is on a difficult matter for us. So if if I had a wish or or, or I think that it's, I think one of the, the explanation of the difficulties where we are right now in, in this world is that by specializing people that much, I mean, those specialities are so close between each other that you are, we are building walls instead of building something which is really, really open. And if we could, even if really difficult items like this, building the thing at the starting point, really more open to make sure that scientists are talking with really really early in the process with communication people or marketing people or or journalists or 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 young guys we need some information only for the, the taste of it we might have something which is not that close that specialized that maybe would be a, a better answer for everybody because uh, as soon as you can grab a, a big amount of people but one item even if it's difficult then it goes faster because if if uh, a big branch of people are accepting this project or this ID because uh, it's had been explained in a good way, then things will be faster and maybe it will be less problematic to to find some money to finance all of them. This is my wish. Um, back to this point where he was talking about, um, you know, it's not as easy as it sounds. Well, people that are going to crowdfund science are self-selecting as enthusiasts of science. They are going to be passionate amateurs. Amateur, the word, stems from love for a topic. And it's not like you have to explain to everyone on the street. You need to explain to people that already have an interest in science why your science is worth their time and money versus spending their money on something else or versus not so spending it on someone else's science. So it's it's not like you have to, to explain to everybody. The very nature of crowdfunding is going to self-select down to those few that really care about what you're doing. Well, you, you, um, to your point about not every scientist is good at videography, well, shame on them, because every <laughs> school kid is. Because digital tools are taught in every school in the world now. And if a scientist can't keep in up America. with a high school kid, then shame on that scientist. Only in America. No. You go to Australia, you go to New Zealand, you go to Cambodia, you go to Zimbabwe. Every school kid is learning digital tools. The digital tools are common all around the world now. You, you, you took it from... You, you took it from my lips, uh, the word love. It's um, what I would answer to your question is uh, I would like people, I mean, uh, everyone and also the politicians to love science because it's everywhere and it's everyone's using this and uh, they're not amazed or not 
every day, but I think everyone should be amazed every day to use this thing and what's what's inside. So uh, I I would ask for uh, everyone to to open what uh, Bruno Latour, this is a French philosopher, uh, would call a um, black box. It's yeah, what's what's behind all this and what research led to to this technology. I totally agree with with the the problem that uh, we have too much enclosed unclo closed uh, environment environment in, sci in scientific community. And if I had the superpower, it would be to uh, to to be able to uh, make people in my community to understand that people love science and want to read science. We have more than three million users reading each month our uh, uh, platforms, and uh, I think this is. Uh, a goal for us to 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 try to uh, gain this superpower. <laughs> uh, for me, um, I think that um, we have to change the paradigm of uh, how science is uh, is made. Uh, science uh, scientists are very under uh, great pressure, so um, I think they can be uh, they can do a, a video. It's not a problem, but the the pressure is. Can I do this video on, on my research because I have some pressure by competitors, scientific, other lab who can have the money before me because I am more uh, aware of what they are doing on the, the topic. So um, my my dream is scientists use a lot of communities to work, collaborative working, and uh, share uh, science at every point of uh, how it's, it's built. You can share science when you are thinking of a, a new project it's very useful to talk with other scientists but also with other people or other fields or citizen science uh, citizen uh, people and um, when you are doing science it's uh, very useful to to talk with your scientist community it's not always the sky is the case huh? a lot of scientists are working alone on things that are the best and uh, can do everything and uh, talking when you are you are dealing with data and uh, thinking you are more efficient if you are using a communities or collaborating, working to uh, analyze data, or when you are writing a publication, yeah, there, are, there is a lot, some digital tools very interesting to uh, write it by collaborating way. It's very useful, and uh, you can, uh, I think, write more efficiently, and it's more interesting to share your work. And after using uh, open access, so every people can access very. Uh, so very fast because uh, the process of uh, science edition is very slow now. If you are using the, the academic way, a very expensive way, a very uh, strict way, it's uh, one or sometimes two years before you are when you start writing your article and the article is accessible, uh, not always free. Uh, that's the point. And uh, share it very soon because a lot of uh, open access pathway you can share before submitting your paper. So uh, people can access very soon your data on progress on your topics. Uh, it's a collaborative way to, to, to make science. It's not I publish, I am the, the master of my topics. And after I can have some big grants, that's the point we have to, to change, to have some more open science. And I think we have to, to change our mind of government minds. It's not, uh, it's collaborating way, open science. It's a way to, make faster science to make some goes faster on uh, to have a more involvement of uh, people only not only scientists but every community who are uh, very interesting in science scientists uh, government uh, journalism every uh, media on people because people are uh, able to to work with scientists to, to produce science and uh, people are the next scientist, the next generation of scientists. So when we are talking of, we are able to, to produce less and less scientists because people are not interested in science. Open science is a very nice solution to, to have some new revolution of science. Thank you. Uh, so it was easy, that uh, magic trick stuff, right? <laughs> um, we have a few more minutes to have some remarks of questions and I see uh, already that there are some. Uh, 
to say two points. So I can only talk about my field, which is mathematics. Uh, first, we actually do work in a collaborative way. Uh, the problem of computations is one issue which has to be, which will have to be addressed soon, especially with Elsevier and Springer. But they hold the most prestigious journals, so it's a difficult situation. But about diffusion, about opening the black box, and about love, I mean, most of us in mathematics, we are teachers at uh, the university, and we are, and more and more, and it's been, it's been on for, I, I'd say, forever. Outreach is, has always been very, very important. And they are in France, in Germany, in the UK, in the US, there are lots of uh, way outreach is, uh, is, uh, is put forward. For example, even for some European brands within the European Union, within the, in the US with NSF brands, outreach is taken into account. And for example, if you talk to university teachers, university professors that like me, some of them, most of them, let's say, are involved in you know, going to elementary school, doing fun experiment, experiments with kids, and uh, just making sense of it. So if this is happening, and of course this is easier in mathematics because we don't have any home to hide, we don't have data to hide, we can say nobody cares, maybe, but uh, <laughs> the, the field itself makes it easier, so we have a pretty late situation there. Okay, that's a hopeful concluding remark. Um, sorry, this is uh, fascinating, but we, I think we have to close now. Um, thank you for uh, your participation. Just uh, a few words. Uh, the summary would be that in order to foster open access, well, let the science be more open, right? <laughs> so we, we are around a circle. And... For those of you who are interested in those topics, I urge you to meet Celia, who is leading Hack Your PhD, which is a community of researchers and beyond research um, to foster those new practices of research uh, from all the topics that we discussed, open data, open access, and open science in general. Thank you once again, and have a good uh, Wisher Fest. Thank you.